Hello and welcome to the video. So in this video, we are starting the exoskeleton build for the next and hopefully final prototype for the Powered Armoured Exoskeleton Project, of which we are starting with the main kind of integral part of this, and that is the upper back section that holds the shoulder blade part, will hold the shoulders and the arms, and then of course the spine underneath. Now I've made a few exoskeletons at this point and this is something that was quite a lot of trial and error on just working out what actually works with your shoulders and your movement and everything because there were some things that I found weren't exactly obvious on the outset of actually designing an exoskeleton on how everything needed to be and work together. So if we take a look at one of my old exoskeletons you can see one of my earlier designs was basically to have this bracketry system on the back kind of like a cantilever design if you will that allowed your shoulders to move in and out and allow you to basically rotate your arms around without anything clashing, keeping anything in line. As the exoskeleton grew, I did then add springs onto it so it was all tensioned in that way. And that way all of the system basically kept together, but you did have full freedom of movement that you needed to have. However, this is where building a fully armored version of the suit in a rough prototype form, even though you could say the entire kind of design wasn't fully finished, did actually pay off because adding that weight to the suit and everything that it entailed meant I could learn certain things that I wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. One of which is this spring system, unfortunately, didn't really work very well once you had weight on the arms because it did mean you had to up the tension in the springs to a point that even though it might have felt all right physically moving them when it wasn't on you, the tension in the springs basically made it very difficult to actually move around once you had the tension that was required to actually hold the arms up with the arm armor attached. This meant the arms would sag down essentially and I did learn something else and it's that for the early prototypes I basically made everything out of aluminium, out of just uh, two or three millimeter sheets of aluminium. This worked great but of course aluminium isn't really strong enough and then you can say well do you need to have like curves on the metal to make it stronger you know like arches in the metal to create a stronger three-dimensional shape. And the answer is no, really, there isn't much of a point. And here's why. Number one, shaping these parts so they fit really nicely against the body is kind of just pointless. Because what you really don't want to happen is you really don't want any of these parts touching your skin at all. Any, any part of the exoskeleton that is going to move and rotate a little bit, you don't want touching your skin because it's just going to nip your skin or rub. It doesn't matter how you shape it, you're always going to have that issue. So you either want complete clearance or essentially clearance by padding. All of that makes basically shaping these parts to perfectly fit parts of your body is basically irrelevant. Secondly, adding these three dimensional curves just kind of make it more difficult to produce. It limits how you can prototype it, especially like you can do 3D printing, but then it makes it more difficult to make anything out of metal or out of carbon fiber. It certainly makes doing things that are adjustable, that are kind of like sliding and out, it makes that a bit more difficult. And it's not that you can't do it, it's just more difficult than necessary. Whereas what I found, if I make them out of flat parts and design them so I can cut them out of carbon fibre, so they more kind of resemble the parts of a racing drone that is CNC'd out of a flat piece of carbon fibre, then especially if some pieces are doubled up overlap to provide extra adjustment, you can definitely have parts that are strong enough without having fancy curves in it that makes it difficult to produce. That way it's also easy to basically upgrade to different types of materials and means you can prototype out of anything that's basically flat plate, whether that's plastic, metal, whatever it is, you can prototype out of that. And then when you're ready with the design and you know what you want to do, you can then make it out of carbon fiber and waste less money on carbon fiber waste. The other part of this is you do want all of these pieces to be as thin as possible so they can all be as tight to the human being as possible, thereby reducing the width and depth, making it easier to do regular things like get through doorways, which I found to be the bane of life. So with that in mind, and then you realize a lot of these exoskeleton pieces are only gonna be 30, 40, 50 millimeters wide. The amount of curve you're essentially would want to put onto these pieces, you're only talking like two or three millimeters of curve along the width of the bracket, for example. That is virtually nothing for a lot of hassle instead of just being able to cut it out of flat plate. So you'll notice on this series of exoskeleton builds, a lot of it is just out of flat plate carbon fiber. Typically about three millimeters, I found that to be good. Two millimeters is too weak, but doing three millimeters, you can double it up without much problem. And it's something I kind of found the sweet spot. So most of this exoskeleton will be made out of that with some curved pieces of carbon fiber, although that will be kept to a minimum. Now to solve the issue with the springs, one of the things that I tried to do was basically lock the bottom pivots so that it was only the springs holding it up at the top. This worked slightly, but if anything, it just reduced maneuverability 
and it was kind of a telltale that this design wasn't really fit to carry any weight on it. So I then decided to remove those springs and then retrofit a new design to the Mark IV prototype, which we'll take a look at now. So this is the latest design for the back and shoulder pieces that I've made. So instead of having a spring system, you've got these plates here, which allow movement back and forth. And then to allow you to shrug your shoulders, you've got this movement up and down like so. But there is basically a bolt and a slider here that locks it all into place so that it can't drop any further than that. Slightly annoying thing I did do on this is I forgot to turn these pieces around so they were all shiny side on one way. But as you can see, they are made out of carbon fiber. They are three millimeter thick carbon fiber, which especially when you're doubling these pieces up, it's certainly strong enough at that. And these pieces here on these bolt holes act as the adjustment for the arms. So you can essentially adjust these arms backwards and forwards. And then that little bolt is part of the locking sliding mechanism that allows them to shrug up, but stop there. That way you can also adjust the angle of which the whole thing sits at. One of the problems I did have was trying to actually find some decent hinges for these parts here. You can see these are just little 25 millimeter hinges from regular DIY shops. I haven't been able to find any decent ones. I actually wanna try a flexible plastic that can basically be bolted on and just gives you that movement. It's not like you need not much movement, but it does need to be a very secure movement with no slack in it, no play in it that can cause the whole thing to sag. So for this next prototype that I'll show you, it is just going to be using the same type of hinges, but in the future, I'll probably replace that. You can also see on this partially dismantled arm, we've got the shoulder position. So we've got the rotator for the back of the shoulder and then just the hinging point around the sides and then the rotating side for the basically front lifting delt part of the arms. I will go over this part more in a separate video, but I did just want to go over that a little bit so I can demonstrate a problem that I found. And that is to do with... If we go back to here, a mistake that I made is that basically these points here should be lower down. But because I was modifying all of this from the previous design, I couldn't move this thing lower down. So unfortunately, the fixing points for these parts did have to be where they are here. However, the issue you have is just how you shrug. This is the reason why this next prototype we're going to make today isn't going to be made out of carbon fibre just because I'm having to alter quite a bit and I fear I might get it wrong. And due to the size of this whole plate, if you will, making that out of carbon fibre is quite a big piece of carbon fibre. So if I screw it up, it's not that cheap. Now we've gone over this, we'll just go over to the gym and go over the actual movement of shrugging your shoulders and where I made the mistake on this version and on previous versions. So I think the reason I made this following mistake is just because in the gym you do things like shrugs and you see how your shoulders, when you shrug, basically just move up in one straight line. However, while that can be the case, I think a lot of the reason why you do that in a gym is simply because you're carrying weight, so that's the easiest motion for your shoulders to do. However, in actual fact, when you do a shrug, at least unweighted, your shoulders do kind of move in a curved direction. So when your shrug is down, essentially, your shoulders will be wider. And then when you lift your shoulders up, they basically go in towards your neck, which means the pivot point for the exoskeleton does need to be lower down. So you essentially get the correct angle and curve as you lift your shoulders up in the exoskeleton. Another reason for that pivot point to be at the bottom is so the brackets can essentially move out and wrap around with the shoulders, but can also contract into the center of the back to allow all of the mechanism for the shoulders to move around to face the back. So if you watch the chalk marks on my shoulders, you can see as I move my arms around, any part of this back piece would have to be able to extend to allow for those shoulder pieces to rotate around. But equally, as I put my arms back up to the sides, you can see how those two dots get close together. So any mechanism would have to get close together. This isn't possible if you have that pivoting mechanism higher up, it basically all just gets jammed up and you can't move freely in those positions when you need to do. This is the reason why you'll see a lot of commercially available exoskeletons using this type of design because there's not many other ways as I've found you can actually do it where you can get that full maneuverability. With that said, we'll go into CAD and take a look at the new revised design, of which you can see how the pivot point is now moved down. The arms are extended and if anything, they are thickened up a little bit to make sure they're as strong as possible. We have the center spine piece again with some holes to help it mount onto the back plate. 
That, however, is something that I need to check and make sure is right because I'm not 100% if the exact bolt locations will work out correctly. Hence why, again, it's a plus not doing this part out of a carbon fibre yet. Then you can see how the main pieces can extend out and in. Depending on where they need to be for the individual user, these, again, are just bolted together to make it secure and simple. Here is the locking mechanism for the pivot to limit or set the amount of movement you have in the pivoting system. I feel like I may have to add more bolt holes to these, but we'll see. It is a little bit difficult sometimes in CAD to work out exactly where the shoulders sit until you get it actually made and tested out. Just to note that this top piece is a piece that needs to be curved out of cam fiber. So I will be making a mold at some point with that. That basically curves over towards the chest plate and attaches to the back armor plate. I won't be making that yet as that does have to be quite accurate in the curve just so it actually sits correctly onto your shoulders. So if we swing over to the left here, we can see the pieces that'll be 3D printing, which is the center spine piece, which will be split in two. The reason why I'm 3D printing these pieces is so I can put these blocks on them just to test out where it needs to sit exactly on the back armor plate. I know it'll be between about 50 and 70 mil off the back plate, but I'm not 100% which one. And because there is that hinged movement in the spine pieces, that extra 10 or 20 mil does matter. As if I make that gap too small, it might clash with the back plate. If I make it too big, it might make the actual whole chest and back plate too tight on the user. And then these other part will be cut out of fiberglass sheet, which I bought trying to just cut costs of this prototyping, but actually the fiberglass sheet was nearly the price of cam fiber, so I might have wasted my time there. But oh well, let's get cutting and get it put together. And there we have the center spine piece. We've got it glued together just there. I had to print it in two pieces. Got these blocks ready to cut down all neatly. And then we've got the rest of the pieces cut out of fiberglass ready to put together. And I'm still going with these little 25 millimeter hinges for now. On the plus side, they are strong and cheap. It's just that they also look cheap. And then we have the entirety of this system put together. As you can see, it's all bolted together, hinges in the middle. You then have these movements here. I've had to drill some more holes in here. I did get that wrong. This is the type of reason why I wanted to do this prototype and not just make it straight out of carbon fiber. I've set the positions to the second one on there on the fiberglass pieces. I think that's correct but that is of course something can change as we go along and then on the back we've got these points here where we can mount the back plate onto and then you can see those sliding mechanisms there there is a washer down the sides of these to add a little gap and to allow for movement you can see how these plates are nice and thick so they won't twist much with the weight on it hence why three millimeters is actually good enough and we'll now get the back plate and see what it's like onto this now, for anyone who's watched the previous videos, you'll know that I had some 3D printer problems, and this is one of the pieces I had those 3D printer problems with, and I haven't had time to redo it yet, but it's good for this demonstration. And here we have the new version hung up and roughly lined up with the back piece at least. You can see, comparing it to the other side, how the hinging point is completely different, lower down and should give the correct angle. As for the blocks, I've cut about 10 millimeters off them to fit them to the back plate at what I think is the required distance. So you can see as I pivot this arm back and forwards, it does clash with the back plate. Now again, you don't really need much movement on this piece, but you do need some and that's certainly enough. It might actually be more than I need, so I might have to close that up closer a little bit more. But I have got to bear in mind, I'm going to have these bolt holes here and a mechanism for the backpack at the bottom. It is pretty close to clashing down here, although it doesn't at the minute. However, I do think this might be set a little bit low on the back plate at the minute. I really need to get these shoulder pieces on just to have a kind of a comparison and a check compared to the old prototype just to see where it all sits. But again, that can be changed for when this all gets cut out in carbon fiber and the back gets reprinted. Now you may look at these and think these surely can't be strong enough to carry the weight but they are even in fiberglass pretty stiff and secure but you've also got to remember that most of the weight for this suit is basically acting downwards like that not on the flat side of the plates but despite those minor modifications that i'll have to make i am happy with it in general and glad to finally be getting building the next prototype for the next video for the other parts of the shells i'm gonna reprint this piece get it attached properly and ideally I have the center piece out of carbon fiber, if not the side pieces as well. Most of the pieces for the next exoskeleton will just be made straight out of carbon fiber. I don't see the point in messing about with any other material. It was like I was saying, just those two, because they are big pieces to waste if I get it wrong.
So now I've got that all put together, I can change any little bits I need to do into CAD to make sure everything lines up and bolt holes line up and everything else. Get that new back piece cut and get those pieces cut out of cam fibre. So then in the next video, we're moving on to the shoulder parts and the arm parts, which I should just be cutting straight out of cam fibre. Again, I don't see the point in doing it out of different material now. All those pieces are pretty sure I know exactly how they need to be. So please like and subscribe. There is a sledgehammer renovation video coming soon. Some other things, and I'm also finally getting around to actually learning how to do the PCB maker in Fusion 360, so I can get some custom motor controllers built and all of that fit stuff for the actuators. But with that said, I hope you have a great day, and thank you for watching, and I hope to see you on the next one.